Hi, this is Denise Matthew. I hope you're doing well. I just wanted to pop in and do a quick video on how you can use the human design transits and combine it with astrology. Now, if you know a little bit of astrology, just even where your ascendant is and the houses of your chart, then it'll be easy for you to see where the themes for the transiting gates will be playing out for your specific astrology chart. And it's a really nice added dimension to astrology in that you can add the specific theme. So for instance, Pluto moves very slowly. And in fact, Pluto will be in the sign of Capricorn from November 27th, 2008, right until January 21st, 2024. So it's a really long time for Pluto to be in one particular sign. But because we have human design gates, and there's a certain amount of gates in every particular sign, and I do have a whole guide or a list of the astrological degrees that coincide with each particular gate. And that way you can see what particular gates are going to be connecting with your body graph, but also what houses they would be in your astrology chart, because that will give you one more dimension of how exactly those transits might impact you in specific. And one last thing, I just put a video up with the full report or the full transits of the full moon coming up. So if you wanted to watch that as well, so you can get more information about the themes of the full moon, please feel free to do that. I will leave the link below. I also have the full forecast for February, as well as in a full overview for 2022 that if you haven't checked out, you might want to check out because that gives the, the bigger picture of the slower moving planets, which are taking more time in every gate. And it gives you that overview, whereas the monthlies will give you the themes of the faster moving planets. And it will give you sort of a more day to day type of energy of what exactly is happening. With that said, let's get into some new content. Here's a complete list of all the particular gates and their astrological range, you could say. It doesn't actually break it down into the lines. Now, if you want it something like that, you can look at Chaitan Parkin has a particular book called The Book of Lines, and it will give you every single different line and its astrological range. Even so, this is a great resource because it can really show you what specific planets are in what specific gates. You can always use the transits or the just now chart that you can get for free on Jovian or if you have the human design app, or you can just check out my community page because I do do a daily posting that talks about the transits that are happening and what's current and where everything is. So that can keep you up to date as well. So this is a great resource. Like I said, you can take a screenshot of it. One thing you might notice is that some gates are straddling two signs. So for instance, the gate 10 straddles two signs that's between Sagittarius and Capricorn and even the gate 60. So there are going to be based on the way the mandala is and how it interacts with the I Ching hexagrams and also the gates and, and also the astrology, but it doesn't matter. It still will put you in the range. So you'll know that that gate is being transited by a particular planet. So what this full moon is showing us really quickly, just so we can relate it later on to Brittany's chart is that it, the sun is going to be in the gate 30 line four. Now this is a potential for burnout. This is about reformulating our desires, our goals, where we're going in our life and maybe going too far. And if we're going too far, can we stop from going over the edge where we hit burnout? Because there's a potential that this is where we grow the bubble so much that it actually pops. So this is saying, watch out, you know, you don't want to burn yourself out. Is there something you can sort of be proactive on in care or whatever you're doing so that you don't have to be reactive in the in the long run and if we see the moon is in the gate 29 but we also have the earth in the gate 29 and this is what we always look at as being the place where we can discover that that method of how we can work with the energy so what that says is the gate 29 is where we're finding in the line four is where we're finding this ability to persevere to stick with what we want to do to find the passion to continue to move forward but we're doing it in the most easy way that we can the most simple way so that we're not making everything complicated because as soon as we're making it complicated then it's going to require more energy and that could lead to burnout so this is really saying let's really work on getting things very 
streamlined so that we know that all the energy that we're putting in something is going to be very on target and we're not wasting any energy and that way we're preserving preserving our own energy so that we don't have to worry about potentially burning out so that is the kind of the main theme that we're looking at now we want to put that over top her natal chart and look where the sun is going to be transiting. And one thing to remember about the natal chart is that the earth will never be represented. So that's just something to keep in mind. But what you can do is you can use the table that I have and you can find out where your earth is and you can just sort of draw it in or or imagine it's there in your in your body graph. So let's have a look at um, the simplest version of the transits. And I hope that this will be in some way helpful, but if it's in any way confusing, please be sure to uh, feel free to ask as many questions as you, as you like, because you know I always will answer your questions. And if I can help you understand it, I definitely will do my best to do that. I've already made a video about the electromagnetics and planetary transits. I'll link that below so it'll give you even more of a dimension. So I'm just going to go over how we can actually put all those things into play so that we can get more details about our chart. And today I'm going to use the chart of Britney Spears because she has a few activations in her body graph and I'll show you how the full moon might affect her particular story or what's happening in her life because I know she's sort of been in the news off and on and she might be someone who you can watch and see if anything is happening in the news that's happening in her life that may be related to these particular transits. So before I get into actually doing a chart and going through Britney Spears chart and what the full moon might be sort of showing up for her, I just wanted to go through something very basic so that you can use this information in your own body graph and your um, astrology chart as well. If you want to get an astrology chart for free to go to astro.com, you can get a free chart there. It's pretty easy and it can be very helpful. And when I talk about your ascendant, it's also called your rising sign. It's basically the energy that's on the first house. So if we look at, for instance, Britney Spears chart, and we're seeing that she has uh, the full moon. And what we see here is that we have the compilation of the transits that are in the green and we have her natal body graph in the blue and this is just from my human design app and it's a nice way that they can do an overlay so that you can see exactly how it's affecting your chart and usually we would sort of look at the ones that are connecting to some uh, particular energy so for instance her 32 is connecting to the gate 54 that's being transited so that's giving her the full flow of ambition and so it might sort of make her want to be um, sort of climbing the ladder of life or maybe get that vibe that she wants to start improving something in her life so we can see it like that now if we look at her actual natal chart let's look at how that looks and what houses the full moon will be connecting with so where the themes for a culmination might be for her in general so based on what I usually like to use I do whole houses that means that each house is one particular sign now other people will use different houses but I find for transits and this type of predictive or you could look at energy that is is dynamic I find this works better but you use whatever works for you when I talk about the rising sign that's also called the ascendant and that's the AC on this chart so that would be your first house and this is sort of it's the definition of who you are and it talks about you as in general and how you present yourself to the world. And that's a way that you know where each particular house is because your ascendant is going to be in your first house. So if you count from your first house on, including your first house, so for instance, your first house and then each one after that. So you can see that it's going to be a full moon in her 11th house. Now, the 11th house is about groups, goals, dreams. It can be about her fan base. Um, it's about organizations. It's like a bigger scheme of type, type of things. Now with her, hers is in... In Leo which really talks about this idea of being a big presence having a big personality having a big fan base and all those things are true for her but I don't want to get too deep into it I will do more of an analysis about sort of some transits and how they worked in or seem to be working for her or potentially might work for her in the future I'll do that later on but I really want to keep it basic so that you can do it for your own chart and so you're going to look at where the moon is and you can see it's a transit and that would be on the outer side now the inner 
most planets are always going to be what you were born with or your natal planets. Now, remember, these are only going to be for your personality side. So this is only the personality that you're going to be able to tell. If you don't have an astrology background, it might be a little bit more difficult to follow. So ideally, just looking at your personality chart or your birthday or your natal chart in astrology might really give you some insights in how these transits are playing out for you. So if we look at this idea that her moon is going to be happening in her 11th house, the, the full moon is going to be happening in her 11th house, it really does talk about those 11th house themes. And we know that the moon is in the gate 29. And this is talking about this idea of perseverance and moving forward and getting the simplest way forward and how you want to get ahead in life. And if we see that the sun, which is in opposition, that's in her fifth house. This is all about what we do for fun. This is romance, children, creative projects, those types of things. This is showing that she might have this intense passion to be with her children, have a romantic relationship, or maybe even to get into some creative projects, new creative projects that she wants to start to work on or stuff that she's always been already been working on and maybe closing it up or changing it up or finishing it up, having the final touches on something that she's been working on creatively. So that could be the focus here. And with the sun in the gate 30, as we noticed, that is just giving it that more of this kind of passion and this desire to have these creative expressions but also there's always this caveat that you have to watch out because there is potential with the gate 30 for burnout so from the most basic perspective that could be what this full moon means for her so you'll see the green are the places where that is the transits that are happening and the planets are specifically interacting with her charts. Now, the ones that we would look the most at would be the ones where you see blue and green, because what that's going to show you is that you do have some level of interaction, her natal body graph with the transits that are happening. So if you look at her head center, she has normally she would have three hanging gates, the gate 64, the gate 61, and also the gate 63. Now they remember that that is considered the gates that um, they call it the gates of madness is not a very nice way to say it. But the, the thing about this energy is that you have a lot of um, inspiration and mental pressure, but you don't have an outlet to express it. And she never has an outlet normally. With Uranus being in the gate 24, and it's been in there for a while since 2021, you've seen a lot of things happening in her life where she's able to get, she was able to get out of her conservatorship and to finally get hold of her life in a way that an adult should be able to. So what's happened is, can we connect that to the idea that she's able to express her inspirations or express her thoughts now? Because instead of all this pressure building up in her in her head center and not being able to let the energy flow in that it can get to the throat center and she can talk about it, she finally does have this access. Now, I, when I talk about this energy, it's like you have a gumball in a gumball machine and it's inside the machine. You put money in and you can't get anything. It, it, it gets stuck and it doesn't come down. But now she has access, which would mean that from the 61, she gets the 24 and that's a transit. She does have the 1156 always. So that brings it right to the throat so she can express herself. So that might have been a transit that was helpful for her. Who really knows? I mean, this is all theoretical, but it's just something that we can throw out there to see that that was actually something that is potential for her. Now, if we go back to her chart and we look at where Uranus is transiting in her actual astrology chart, let's do that right now and see how it might look. So if we look at Uranus and it's transiting her eighth house, now the eighth house can be the house of the occult. It can be the house of inheritance. It can be about death, taxes, or things that are hidden away from us. It's a place where we have to dig deep to find information and answers. It can be a house of a legacy through marriage, but it is also financial gain through something. Now, this is also joint finances, which we know was the case because she didn't have control of her money. If we look at Uranus connecting to, based on the body graph, connecting to Venus, 
because Venus is in the gate 61 in her natal body graph, we see it in the fourth house. The fourth house is our foundation. This is our most private area. This is where we build our family and where we have our sort of foundation that we live in, our house, our basically everything that gives us structure in our lives. So Uranus is connecting with her Venus. It's really talking about the finances and how it gives you gives her structure in her life and that she had to dig deep to get these finances back so that she could build the structure of her life again. So it, it really does show in her chart how this actually, this transit probably did help her a lot. Venus is also about resources, abundance, and how how we make money. Also, what gives us pleasure? So her pleasure is to have a strong foundation, a strong place or base where she can feel comfortable. And maybe she hasn't felt that that's been part of what she's had. Uranus is coming in and it's kind of uh, very unusual or shifting things up. It's revolutionary. And so it's revolting against the way things were before and bringing in something brand new. And it is also in Taurus, which is considered the ruler of Venus, which makes a lot of sense once again, that it is connecting with bringing back money to her life. And it truly is her legacy. It is her money. This is money that she's made over the years. She may not be making money now, but it is in fact her money and it was joint. And now she's making it something that is she owns and it's about her money and what she's making. And one more note that is kind of interesting, a lot of times, now some people will change this up, they'll say that the fourth house is related to the mother because it's ruled by cancer naturally, and the 10th house is related to the father, but then other people will say that the fourth house is connected to the father. So if we look at it from that perspective, this even brings one more layer of this father influence in it. Now, if we look at Venus being in the gate 61, line three, and it is about Venus, like I said, about all the things that how we make our money and love relationships and those types of things. And it, it could sometimes talk to being connected to the wrong kind of people that are giving you the wrong kind of advice. Or what Ra Uruhu said, banging into the wrong people who will give you the wrong advice, which really sounds like that's been a theme for a lot of her life. So I know that the gate 24 has been transiting for a while and that's not specifically, I mean, it is in the full moon energy, but I just wanted to give you that headline so that you could see how this really can make a difference in how we interpret and see how our life is shifting based on the transits that are happening all around us. The other thing that's happening with this particular full moon is that the gate 29 is being activated by the earth and the moon. This gives her a full channel, the 2946. And this really talks about serendipity, being in the right place at the right time. This is giving a flow of energy. So maybe some good luck might come her way. And when we see the earth transiting in the gate 29, it really does bring it into this manifest world, this actually happening in the real world kind of energy. We're grounding into this. Or this other idea could be that she is, as, as we talked about the line four, she's getting more simplistic with how she wants to run her life, how she wants to make things work for her life. The other connection is that she's having a connection with the gate 32, that she has a hanging gate 32, and she's got the full channel with the gate 54. Now, this is the channel where we're being seen for the talent that we bring to the collective, and this is ambition, too, where we're trying to move up the ladder of life to get one rung higher. So maybe there's going to be some new ambitious plans that she's starting, some new things that she wants to do to raise her, her, her status in some way, to maybe come back into entertainment or to move into something brand new that she hasn't done in a long time. This might give her that boost to say, okay, now it's time to, you know, since I have all my finances and I do have more autonomy in my life, maybe it's time for me to go out and start to do what I love to do, whatever that is. And it will bring me some level of abundance because that's part of her dynamic because she's has a gate 32 in her body graph. Uh, so it means that that is part of of something that is normal for her to do. We also have Pluto working on her specific gate, her gate 60 as well, which means that she's probably under some level of mutation or some shifting up of her reality, reconfiguring 
a new way of looking at the limitations of her life, transforming through the limitations of her life into something brand new. And of course, this will be over a couple of years because Pluto is going to be in the gate 60 for a few years or so. And the gate 14 is also interacting with her chart. And this just talks to this idea of this giving your talent to the world for a selfless reason. So you want to give something back to the world. So in other words, this kind of adds to the same theme of maybe coming back into entertaining or doing something that she wants to do. Maybe she does want to get back into singing or something like that. I don't really know, but it's just something that is a potential. Now let's look at her astrology chart and see where it's going to play out in her houses. I do have to apologize because I know I am making it quite complicated and probably I shouldn't have included her design chart as well but I'm just going to throw it out there and you can use this if you want to but if you just want to use the house system and see where particular transits are happening in your particular house then that would probably be the thing and basically just your natal chart because what happens because we have two basically charts that we can look at for where the transits are happening we do have the natal chart or the day we were born chart but we also have the design chart or the 88 days or 88 degrees before we were born chart now for Britney Spears it's September 4th 1981 there's a free access to uh, something called mybodygraph.com and if you want to get your design date you should be able to get that a lot of software like if you're a subscription for genetic matrix I think they have it but I think that they may have a free chart that you can get and maybe you can get your design date but if you can and you are sort of really interested in astrology what you can do is make up a second chart so what can happen is you can be having a long transit to a design gate for instance and you may not be able to track it on your astrology chart because it's just not there you can't see it it's like hidden because it's something that is before and that's not your natal chart so what I do is I will run a specific chart for that particular design date and you can do this on astro.com you can do it for free and if you want to play with where the energy is based on the transits and if it's in a different house and how it's working for you so it can give you sometimes more clarity when things just don't make sense based on your natal chart or you're having transits to your design gates so here's Britney Spears astrology based on her design and if we see that it's all the same kind of concept. So the things that we were talking about in her body graph, maybe she's going to go out and do something with her career, or something with getting out into the world with groups, organizations, or the in, in the 11th house, that can be the people that are your fans and all those types of things that you notice that those are the two houses that are being highlighted by the transits that we talked about, the gate 54 to the gate 32. So Pluto in this particular chart is in the gate 32. Mercury's in the gate 46. And we have Pluto is transiting over her design south node. When we know that the nodes are related to her environment, that is transforming her environment so that it's going to be finding the best that you can given the limitations that you have in your life. And her Mercury in the gate 46 being in the right place at the right time, this is related to the body. So maybe she's going to start dancing so that she can get prepared or more of this type of activity where she's moving her body so that she can be prepared for maybe some shows that she might, might want to do. So that's potential as well. Uranus is in the 11th house. This is like using her talents for the good of the world. And when you put it in the 11th house, I mean, this is a very goal oriented dream kind of place where we have our goals and dreams. But again, for her, it would be potentially where her fans are. So reconnecting with her fans, uploading her career, doing those types of things. These might be some things that this full moon is bringing to a culmination where we may hear of an announcement that she is starting to step back out into the real world. Let's see how it plays out. So I know that that was very complicated and I do apologize. I wanted to make it as simple as possible, but I also wanted to stretch it out so that there was this ability to go from the simplest form to sort of move it into something more complicated if you want to. And it really is based on how much astrology information or experience you have. Now, the reality is this. 
There are people who believe that astrology and human design don't necessarily mix. But having said that, I see that there are more people out there who are doing transits. And I'm happy to see that. I know that Jovian had a transit report that was uh, being sold for the transits for 2022. And I also know that other people are doing it. So I think it's just one more way that we can use the astrology and human design to just get another bead on where exactly things might be activated. Even the, the most basic type of themes of what might be sort of showing up in our reality. And I think that um, it's just one more way we can use the symbols of human design to help navigate our life. It's not uh, something that is deterministic in any way. It is just pointing a finger at a potential theme that might show up in your reality. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you like these types of videos where I'm sort of talking about charts and how transits can interact with the body graph and also the astrology chart, please let me know. And uh, if you have some other ideas that you of some videos that you want me to work on, uh, please let me know and I will see what I can do. But for now, that's it for today and take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.